This is my latest experimental cockpit, the result of three and a half years tinkering with FSX. I'm using Track IR, of course. For my money, a head tracker is the single most useful add-on after a joystick, and head tracking was the breakthrough that made the virtual cockpit truly usable. But it's not perfect, for one fairly obvious reason. As you see here, we only have a very narrow vertical field of view, a window literally through which we see the virtual cockpit and the world beyond. And that window is far too narrow to show all of that in a realistic way. Assuming it's set up properly, and I'll say more about what that means in a little while, it fills about 35 degrees of your vertical field of view. And that's only about a third of what your eyes can see. Imagine sitting in a real cockpit and looking forwards through a 35 degree letterbox and that's pretty much what you've got. We don't have quite the same problem horizontally because it's relatively easy these days to add monitors. I'm using three 19 inch monitors here with an Nvidia card and that gives me pretty good peripheral vision. But while the view is well over a meter wide, it's only 30 centimeters high with an aspect ratio of four to one. The way people typically deal with the narrow vertical field of view is to zoom out and this does allow us to see more of the panel and the outside view. But the problem is it's a completely unrealistic view because it's too small, it's unreasonably distorted and the unnatural perspective makes it difficult to judge distances and speeds correctly. By contrast, what I've got on the screen here is more or less actual size. And one consequence of this is I can't see everything at the same time. So what I've done is to add a 2D panel in addition to the virtual cockpit and to display this below the main screen in approximately the same position as the actual panel would be. This one's running on another computer using a program called Panel Builder but you could do this on the FSX computer if the aircraft you're using comes with a 2D panel. This one doesn't, it's the Flight Replicas Super Cub but there are advantages to running the panel on a separate computer anyway. Now although you'll hear me talk about realism here. I just want to add a quick sidebar to qualify this. Obviously the use of a fixed 2D panel in combination with a virtual cockpit and head tracking is incongruous but what we're trying to achieve here is a compromise that provides a compelling experience that's somewhat reminiscent of the real thing rather than something that's indistinguishable from it. So with this combination we get to keep the virtual cockpit and in particular we see bits of the aircraft structure in the way as we look around and move. Now this is not the same as displaying a pure outside view on the monitor because we can't see things that are naturally obscured by the aircraft. We can move around in relation to the structure and because the view is actual size we get a much more immersive experience of actually being in a cockpit. We can also judge distances and speeds pretty much the same as in real life. Of course setting up the view naturally requires some care so I'm now going to explain how to do it. This involves setting the zoom and the viewing distance to an appropriate combination and it'll work for any size screen. The bigger the screen the better and if you have the right hardware you may even be able to dispense with the 2D panel. The first thing you need to do is to make sure you have wide view aspect set to true in fsx.cfg and then set your zoom to 1.0. I've explained this at great length in a previous video and the result is your monitor will show a view of the virtual cockpit measuring about 35 degrees high. It's actually 34 degrees. This means that if you sit the right distance from your monitor so that it actually fills 34 vertical degrees, what you see on the screen is approximately life-sized. There's an important bit missing from that other video which is how do you figure out how far away that is? The simple answer is that the viewing distance, that's the distance from your eye to the plane of the screen is screen height over 0.6. If you want to know why that is, here's a picture. This may look a bit intimidating, but it's simple high school trigonometry and you don't really need to understand it. You just need to know that the tangent of 17 is about 0.3. So for my screen, which is 30 centimeters high, the correct viewing distance is 49 centimeters. Unfortunately, I can't get that close to my screen because of the way things are set up. So the actual distance is 60 centimeters. This means it occupies less than 34 degrees of my vertical field of view. 
and so at a zoom of 1.0 times everything appears smaller than life size. The fix is to zoom the view out a bit, but by how much? Well we already know how the screen height, field of view and viewing distance are related. And we can rearrange this to calculate the field of view as shown here. Now the field of view is inversely proportional to the zoom factor and so for any given viewing distance we can calculate z, the zoom factor, as shown here. For my screen, which you'll recall is 30 centimeters high and at a distance of 60 centimeters, this comes out as a zoom factor of 1.2. Don't worry if you don't follow the maths here, you can just use this formula to plug in your own height and viewing distance and your pocket calculator will have an arctan function. There's some variation in how this might be labelled, but it should be one of these three labels. So there it is, set wide view aspect to true, measure the physical height of your monitor and the distance you sit away from it, and plug those values into the formula to work out the correct zoom factor. What you're aiming for is a life-size display, and remember that wider equals better only up to a certain point. Your eyes can take in about 170 degrees horizontally and about 100 degrees vertically, which is about the same aspect ratio as a 16 to 9 monitor. Interestingly enough, it's also about the same as three 16 to 9 monitors placed side by side in portrait mode. So you might guess where my experiments are headed.